Hi, everyone. Hi. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Nancy. I'm the design lead on the growth team here at Twitter. Um, a little bit about me. I've been doing this for 15 years now. Um, not at Twitter, obviously, but um, just in the business. And I actually come to technology by way of art history. So if that tells you anything, it means that you can start off in this business doing anything and then somehow get into technology. Um, it was a bit of a roundabout way. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but um, I sort of got into it in the mid-90s when there was the first wave of people doing stuff for the internet, basically. It looked like it was like a really cool thing to do, and all my friends were getting into it, so that's kind of why I did it. Um, I started off as a front-end engineer, and then over the years, I sort of gradually segued into design. Um, I actually describe myself specifically as an interaction designer as opposed to um, every other type of designer there is. But most of the people who work here at Twitter and the design team are fairly um, what I would call generalists. They do a little bit of everything. And I'll talk a bit more about some of the different design activities that people do here. Um, and before I started working at Twitter, I spent a lot of my time at um, large consulting firms like Organic and Razorfish. You may have heard of some of those places, and IDEO is another one. Um, before Twitter as well, one of my other startup was a company called Quick, QIK. Um, OK, so let's go on. Um, so I'm here to talk a bit about the difference between user experience and user interface um, and why it's important in mobile in particular. So the first thing to know is that the user interface and user experience are not exactly the same thing. They actually describe two different things. Um, this diagram sort of shows you the, the constellation of user experience. It's basically a lot of different activities that go into um, defining what an end-to-end -end experience would be. So the user experience is basically everything that the people who use your product or your app will do from beginning to end and even outside of the app. So thinking through that whole process of what they're going to do with your app, what, is, what, is it that what it is that they're getting out of your app is what the user experience is. And a lot of these activities that you see here are things or activities that you do to actually help inform what your design is going to be. So things like um, human factors, which is basically user research. So if you're finding out about what your target market um, or the people who are going to use your app, what they might want to use it for, um, and that would help you actually design what you're going to build. Um, the visual design is obviously people who do what the thing is going to look like in your app. And then, um, again, I'm the interaction design, and that's more about how people, like the behaviors of uh, the interface itself and um, basically the flow from start to finish. If somebody's trying to do something in your app, how they do that, and that's interaction design. So sometimes um, all of these activities are done by one person, and sometimes it's done by a team of people. It really depends on sort of the complexity of what you're trying to do. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about user interface. Um, so the user interface is actually how people will interact with your product. It's the way that they will do the thing that they're going to do. Now, initially, I'll do a little few examples here. Initially, computers um, read punch cards, and then they um, printed out the results on paper. So the user interface here for this particular computer is actually this console with all of these knobs and buttons. That's how people interacted with computers way back in the 60s. And actually, this thing is probably, your iPhone or your phone probably has more memory in it than this whole thing in there in this whole room. So um, in the 70s and 80s, uh, Microsoft came up with like desktop computers. And um, basically, now we had input is a keyboard. And what you saw, on, the output is actually on the screen. But what we had to do here is actually do it by command line. There was no mouse. There was no pointing. You actually had to tell the computer every instruction, and then it would tell you something back. And of course, now we're in the wonderful world of um, you know, Apple operating systems, which are really nice and beautiful. And basically, now that we have a mouse, we have this um, graphical user interface. You can actually directly interact with things. You can point your mouse at something and then click on it and actually do something. So that direct, that's kind of direct manipulation. And um, it's far more intuitive than the command line or the sort of punch card stuff that we saw before. So there's actually something similar in mobile, um, same kind of history. You may recognize this phone. Your grandparents may have a phone that's like this still. Um, <laughs> So initially, phones look something like this. Um, 
they were based on landline phones, uh, which you probably have never seen before. Um, so they had like a keypad and a dial thing that you actually interacted with. And these phones had very, very small screens because people basically just used them to make phone calls. And even texting, that was something that came out in uh, the early 90s, basically. And it wasn't even intended to be something that people would do. It was kind of an accident. So uh, as people, as this has evolved, um, you see it's the same kind of pattern. Now we have what we call smartphones. And these will let people basically manipulate things directly on a screen. So what does this mean to you? You're basically probably designing for something like this, right? For an iPhone or for a screen, for, for a phone that has a screen, something like that. So <clears throat> the first thing you should know about designing for mobile is that you have constraints. Um, you should be aware of these. And the first thing really to realize is that mobile phones aren't small computers. They're, they're different. It's a different type of thing. So first of all, you've got really limited real estate. Um, most of these phones are 320 pixels by 480 pixels. And in some cases, are even smaller than that. That's not a lot of room to do anything. We also have um, limited input methods. Basically, people use this now to, to input. Um, or you use voice. And that's a, a whole other ball of wax. Something else to think about is um, limited attention span. People are not fully devoted to whatever they're doing on their app. They're probably like doing a little bit of this and walking or doing a little bit of this and talking to somebody. So they, they've got little short bursts of attention. They're not going to like do a whole big long thing unless your app is all about watching videos or doing something else like that. And then there's expectations. So people have expectations based on um, what else they use their phone for. So if you have other types of apps on your iPhone, for instance, you're going to be used to a certain kind of behavior. And you don't want to do something that's like wildly different from that in your own app. You want to be sort of consistent to help people understand what to expect. So to design, you have to design with focus. Um, the main thing is to plan out the user experience part of this from end to end. Um, find out the answers um, to the questions before you begin coding. So answer things like, what does the app do? What doesn't it do? How will the user do it? Meaning, what steps are they going to take? How will they know when they've done it successfully? Right? Got to give them some kind of feedback to know that they're actually doing the right thing. And then does anything happen outside of the app? Not everything has to happen inside the app. So I'm going to show you some rules and uh, some examples. So the first thing to think about is just keep it simple and focused. Um, there's a great app out there, a great service called UberCab. And basically, it's solving or making it way easier um, how to get a cab. And pretty much what you do is you can set up your account, which is pretty straightforward. And then when you launch the app, this is what you see, right? What do you think you do here? What's the one thing that it looks like you do here? <laughs> exactly. It's got one big button, right? So it, it really removes the chance for somebody to do something wrong or to get lost. Just makes it really, really simple. Show, don't tell. This is especially true for um, the smartphones that we have. This is a really beautiful thing that now we can design interfaces that you don't have to explain it. You can just let the using the interface ex show people what they need to do next. This is um, a pretty new app called Clear. It's just a simple to-do list. And pretty much this is it. Like it, it, it uses color to show you priority. Um, it lets you pull things to create an item. It lets you swipe to complete an item. And then pinch to, to add something in between. And that's basically it. It's very, very straightforward. And then remove friction. So here's another app called Flipboard. Um, it's basically based on Twitter. Um, so one of the things that you do, and again, this is, depends on the, sort of the nature of your app, but think about um, maybe leveraging other services like Facebook or Twitter. If you let people create their account just by signing in using Facebook or Twitter, you can then build on top of that information in your app. And then they don't have to go through a whole other process of setting up a separate account. And then closing the loop. So going back to the Uber example, 
Um, there's a lot of information that you could have around the trips that you've taken in, in a taxi cab. And instead of showing all of this information in the app, they actually have uh, an email that they send you to sort of say exactly what you've done. And then you can find out more information on the site itself. So how do you do this? Um, look to UI guidelines. So every um, smartphone maker, iPhone, well, Apple, and Android both have UI guidelines and specify um, sort of like the best experience that you could do. So look, those are available online. You can download those. Make sure that you have a read through to make sure what the, sort of like the best practices are. Um, look at similar apps. So if you're designing something that's kind of like something else, see how other people have done it and learn from that. And also like take away maybe what they've done wrong or what you would improve. Um, plan and prioritize. So that goes back to what I said before, that sort of constellation of activities. Um, make sure that you do the end to end. You think it all the way through and um, certainly draw it out. So map and layout. Um, and then test it just with your paper prototype and adjust as necessary. Um, build it and use it. So we call that dog fooding, uh, and we do it here at Twitter all the time. Um, the employees get to use stuff before it goes out in the wild, and that gives you a much better um, understanding of what, how this thing's going to work or what's not working. And then release it. So once you release it to, to the big old outside world, keep on gathering feedback and adjust it again. So, so I was asked to um, just sort of finish up with some advice that I have for young entrepreneurs like yourselves. Um, the first one I would say is look to solve real problems. And by that I mean like if you can describe your product as Pinterest for, um, you're probably not trying hard enough. So try and find like some real problems that need to be solved. Um, rule the tools, but don't let the tools rule you. So learn enough technology to understand what you can and can't do, but don't let the technology actually dictate what you should do. Um, lose the insecurity, that's a, a big one. There'll be plenty of people who tell you why you can't do something, and if we all listen to them, nothing would ever get done, so ignore it. <laughs> and then finally, persistence. This is actually, like, forget brain power and talent, the um, biggest predictor of success is actually persistence. You just have to keep at it, and that's how you'll succeed. So be bold, be brave, be amazing. Thanks. <laughs>